Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. So Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akiyam out there doing the work of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. It's Brother Taz Pai here with another lesson, and this lesson is coming on the heels of what the apostles and other brothers have been going into dealing with this uh, being an Israelite is a downgrade. And clearly the scriptures do not support that. And in, in essence, is, is just the opposite. The scriptures bear record to the Israelites being the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And what you got now, um, you, you, you got Vocab Malone and, and whoever his paymasters are. They're, they're coming with a new spin. They got a new angle that they're, they're trying to come with. You see, since they can't compete with the Hebrew Israelites, their thing is to just try to make the Hebrew, make it look like being an Israelite is, is no big thing. Like there's nothing special about being an Israelite. As you heard that guy, uh, and I forget the guy named Pastor, uh, whoever his name is. Uh, he, he speaks about um, he would rather be a joint heir. Being a Hebrew Israelite is a downgrade. He would rather be an, a, a joint heir. You know, in other words, to uh, suggest that anybody could be a joint heir. And that's a grave error because only the Hebrew Israelites can be the joint heirs. This thing is for Israel. But he will draw away some of the simple, you know, being in their emotions, they'll go with that madness. So this is just another way to say that any and all nations can make it. It's not only about Israel, when it's in fact all about Israel. So the scripture I just read, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to just go through it to break it down. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. And see, that's another thing. You know, Catholicism teaches that, you know, there's no nationality in the kingdom. You know, like you go to heaven and we just angels floating around in the clouds. You know, we just, you know, uh, just spirits just floating around, str strumming harps with wings on our backs. You know, there's no nations, no this, no that. You know, that's plantation Christianity. That shit is for the simple there will be nations. The kingdom will be here on earth and there will be blood and flesh nations. There will be nations and the nations are the nation at the top of all nations will be the nation of Israel. You get no higher. There is none higher. As far as when you speaking of nations of men, Israel is the, that's the shit. To be an Israelite is the shit. You know, they're just speaking in today's vernacular of Jake. All right. So when the Most High divided to the nations, their inheritance, meaning their portions of land, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. I wonder why is that? Because Israel comes first. Israel is the premier nation, the top nation. That is, that, that it, there is no downgrade to being a Hebrew Israelite. The downgrade is to be an Edomite, which everyone strives to be. That's the downgrade. And everyone strives and struggles to be just like these low-life Edomites, which the scriptures call the basest of men. You see? But... Um, yeah, everybody wants to be an, uh, uh, a Hebrew Edomite. You know? 
Hey, yeah, uh, yeah, we're pushing on. You know, I, I, I got some thoughts, but I'm gonna keep it on. I'm gonna keep it focused. It says, uh, right uh, again. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. This is what the Most High did. Why? Because Israel is uh, the first. Like you got in America, <laughs> the first, the first family, the first lady. You got the president. Well, Israel is the first nation. All right. It says for the Lord's portion, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Ain't nothing changed about that. That still is what it is. All right. The most highest portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. We are his chosen people, his chosen seed. And then it says he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Right. Do you know what that means? That means we are special in the eyes of the most high. But don't get it twisted. Not all you Negroes. Latinos and Native Americans, a lot of you got the devil on you. A lot of you play with demons and, and have completely given yourselves over to this world. And you bear all the trimmings of this world. You women, you don't know how to cover yourselves. You're fake. Everything about you is fake down to the way you talk and to the way you walk. Everything about you is fake. Your whole persona, your, your makeup, your dress, your personality, you're all fake. And, and you men ain't even men. Now, that's two thirds of the nation. But the Heavenly Father is dealing with one third of the nation. And that's who is the apple of his eye. He sent the Holy Spirit that we may cleanse ourselves from this world. And, and look the part, you know what I'm saying? Look like. We belong to the most high. Act like we belong to the most high. Talk like we belong to the most high. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're showing the world exactly how this is supposed to be done. And I mean this, I mean walking in the earth, teaching these scriptures. This is how the scripture is supposed to be taught. All right. And this is how a man is supposed to be a man. A man is supposed to declare the truth. And walk as a man. Why do you think the Most High told Job to, uh, it's also written in, uh, I want to say Isaiah. But anyway, he told Job to uh, gird up his loins now like a man and that he would demand this of him. And I'm paraphrasing Job, the 40th chapter, which that's also recorded in Job, the 38th chapter. But yeah, the Most High is, is, is dealing with men, real men, but only of the nation of Israel, all right? So it says, he led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Now, how are we instructed? Okay? Is this something that Christianity gets twisted? They want to talk about sweet Jesus and all this and that, but, you know, Yahawashah, which is his real name, not Jesus. Yahawashah said that, well, he said, think not that he come to destroy the law. All the prophets, he said that he came not to destroy, but to fulfill the law and the prophets. But that part gets left out, you know. So how else is the Lord going to instruct you? If you don't have a, a, a set of instructions, which is the law, statutes, commandments, and judgments that the Heavenly Father laid out in this book. This is how he instructed us. The, the same instructions that Christianity teaches you to ignore totally. You see? So any madness, anytime they come out with madness, the spirit comes back 
and, and just completely obliterates that shit. In, in other words, it exposes them more. The, the, the more silly shit that they come with, the greater they get exposed. You know? Listen, listen to this. You know? Oh, boy, boy. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. You know, and, and that goes for, you know, our forefathers. When the Most High set this whole thing up. But as for the elect right now in these last days, the Most High found us in this wilderness of Babylon. You know, you said he led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He kept us. So meaning, because I can't just, just pass over that. He kept us, meaning Israel was never going to be, you know, done away with or forsaken. He kept us as the apple of his eye. Now to quote the apostle to her, and I'm going to just uh, loosely quote him. It's just like a man makes a vow to a friend that he's going to take care of his, his son. You know, his friend's dying wish. Hey, brother, you know, my son, he out there wilding. You know, I'm about to pass on. He ain't got nobody. I need you to look after him. And you take that vow. And then, you know, you got to look after him. You know, he wilding. He doing all types of stupid shit. You try your best to keep him out of trouble and to, you know, teach him and, and put him on the straight and narrow. Well, that's us, man. And that's the promise or the vow that was made to the most highest friend, Abraham. Whose lineage we are of, the children of Israel are of. So the most high said he kept us. As the apple of his eye kept him, who are the, the children of it today, are the children of Israel. As the apple of his eye. That's the main focus, you know what I'm saying, of the Heavenly Father. It's us. That's why the Holy Spirit deals with a remnant of Israel. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. Let's look at this, all right? Now, this is... Uh, All right, we, we're going to jump back. This is, well, jump forward. This is Deuteronomy chapter, uh, no, I'm jumping back. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power commanded me that you should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it, Right? We read about them instructions. It said he instructed him. Which again, that began, that literally happened with Abraham. You know, and then Isaac and then Jacob and then the 12 tribes. But then that carried on down through the ages to today. All right. So this applies to the day as well with the remnant. You know. So it says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my power commanded me that you should do so in the land, whither you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Right. This is how he instructed him. This is how he instructs us. We are of our father, Abraham, not just uh, bloodline lineage but also spiritually because we know that Galatians 6 and 17 states that they are not all Israel that are of Israel you know you got Israelites that ain't really Israelites they in another spirit although they you know Israelites by blood they're not truly Israelites by spirit and you have to be both alright you got to be you got to be of both. You got to be of blood and spirit. All right. So this is how we were. This, this is how we were instructed or this is how we are instructed. You know. 
Again, verse 6, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which ye shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now check this out, verse 7. For what nation is there so great who hath the most high so nigh unto them? As the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for. I'm not, I'm, I'm not seeing the downgrade. I'm, I'm missing that. Is it getting lost in translation? I'm not getting it. So the, the faith that I have in this word, you know, I know there's no fault in this word. So, you know, Fault must be in that doctrine of man that they're pushing, trying to get people to dismiss the nation of Israel. You know, no, there's, the scripture speaks nothing of Israel uh, being done away with or downgraded or, you know, that being an Israelite is a downgrade. Nothing of the sort. All right. Being in Israel, we're the greatest nation. Being an Israelite, is the, that's the best thing that you can strive for. You know? And, and Apostle Gabor brought out how uh, Balaam said that, yeah, he wished he could be like us. Because he saw the end of us. And he knew good and well that, yeah, yeah, what, what blessings and glory that we have coming for us. Most I showed him. And, and again, hey, just like Apostle Tahar said, yeah, most I just hadn't opened this guy's eyes. So if your eyes haven't been opened, then neither should your mouth be. Now that's the title right there. If your eyes ain't open, then your mouth shouldn't be either. If your eyes is closed, your mouth need to be closed. All right. So again, verse seven. Uh, for what? Yeah. For what nation is there so great who had the most high so nigh unto them as the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for? There's no other nation, bro. You can't get you can't get no higher. You know? You can't get any higher. We will be over the angels. You idiot. We will judge angels. What are you talking about? We're going to judge angels, man. Being, a, being a, an Israelite will only be a downgrade if you're the most high himself. Because even Yahweh Shai is an Israelite. You, <laughs> man. Boy, 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 and and uh, Apostle Gabar brought that out as well. Even our Lord is an Israelite, you idiot. Pastor, whoever you is, man, uh, we don't need it. that nigga name ain't important. Uh, Exodus nineteen verse six. Oh, we start at five. Exodus nineteen and five. All right. Uh, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now, I wonder who this people could be. But don't get it twisted. You already know who it is from the precepts that's coming out. You understand? Here the scripture speaking about a peculiar treasure. You know, and that's Jake, that's us, the Israelites, man, we're a peculiar treasure. You know, and the key word there being treasure, well, peculiar and treasure. And it says unto me above all people. Now, hold on. You, you got, okay, he, he said downgrade. Now the scripture saying above the two are in total contrast to each other. So we can't be above all people, but then 
To be an Israelite is a downgrade. That's an oxymoron. And that was an oxymoronic statement that he made. Because right now you a nigger. Right now you a nigger. So is it a downgrade for you to be a nigger out there spewing lies and madness? Is that a downgrade? But that, you know, that won't be brought up. Because he thinks he's a man of the Lord. You know, but man, we, we come from, we come from nothing, man. Well, we in this society, in this setup, we've been treated like shit. Then you come into the knowledge of being a Hebrew Israelite. What you think? Why do you think the scriptures speak about it should be in thy mouth as honey for sweetness? Meaning this truth, because you come into this truth, you know, being disenfranchised, oppressed, okay, being just, just, uh, yeah, just treated like shit to finding out that you are a peculiar treasure unto the most high. That is not a downgrade, bro. That that's that's as up as you gonna get. That's as up as it gets to be a Hebrew Israelite. Verse uh, 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So now there's no doubt of who is talking about it. The peculiar treasure is the children of Israel. No doubt. All right. No doubt. Now, go here to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 26. Uh, let's start at. Verse 15. Some good stuff in here. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 15. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people, Israel. And the land which thou hast given. Did you, have, have you noticed the theme here? And, and if you notice, I've just basically been in one book. Now, and, and please trust me. This theme carries on unto the uh, book of Revelation. But, you know, Deuteronomy makes some very strong points. And, and so I just, you know, bringing not this in, in uh, Deuteronomy, but the book of Psalms said that uh, the Most High had, had taught us, the children of Israel, Jacob, his, his laws and statutes, and he had not dealt so with any other nation. Speaks about how you know, uh, man, it's, it's, it's so many, it's so many, but that we will be blessed above all nations. So this is what it is. So Deuteronomy 26 and 15, look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people, Israel, Yashar Allah, and the land which thou hast given us as thou swearest unto our fathers. A land that floweth with milk and honey. That's the kingdom. You know, now that was the land of Canaan, of course, geographically, that's the land of Canaan. But, you know, we're we, we going to ultimately get to earth, but we will be settled again in the land of Canaan. And it's going we're going to establish the kingdom on earth just as it is in heaven. Under our Lord Yahweh Shai, and the, the, the entire earth is going to be flowing with milk and honey. Not like it is now. Verse 16, this day the Lord thy power had commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. He instructed him. All right. Deuteronomy 32. He instructed him. So here it says again. Verse 16, this day the Lord thy power had commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched 
the Lord this day uh, to be thy power and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord had avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he had promised thee and thou and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to make thee high. That time I checked high and down with two on two total separate ends of the spectrum. Down means low. High means up. So it says, and to make thee high above all nations which he had made. Bro, it don't get no higher. It gets no higher. Now I can go into the, the whole um, uh, uh, joint heirs, but the apostles already put it beautifully, specifically apostle to heart. The joint heirs are Israelites. You got to be an Israelite to be a joint heir. You clown. You know, we're not just going to be just nefarious angels floating around in the sky, you know. We're going to be nations of people on the earth, enjoying the earth as the most high created it to be enjoyed. No sickness, no pain, no misery, you know. No, 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 no uh, poor, no homeless, none of that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, verse 19 from the top. And to make thee high above all nations which he had made, we will be over every nation that the Heavenly Father created. You understand? And it's speaking about us keeping his commandments and his judgments and, and his statutes, his laws, walking in his ways. Well, guess what? The new covenant is just that. The Heavenly Father will program his law, statutes, and commandments into our hearts, our minds, our spirits. And we're going to do just that. So we will be high above all nations, which he had made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as he had spoken. It don't get no, it don't get no better. That's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. So the hell with all these way with doctrines and them trying to come up with new ways to uh, destroy the name of Israel. And, and for what? Just for some filthy lucre, a, a corruptible crown? For what? It's not going to come to pass. You act as if vocab. And your whole motley crew, you act as if we don't know the scriptures. Like you can come up with something that's going to stun us. As if the Heavenly Father ain't dealing with us. Bro, anything you come out with that ain't in line with truth, the Most High is going to thrash your ass with by way of his servants, the prophets. So come up with something different. Shalom.